Isaac's three videos had an explosive impact on YouTube. Are you curious about Isaac's incredible editing style? Don't worry, I'll walk you through the process, explaining Isaac's editing secrets and how to go viral on YouTube. In this video, I'll show you how to edit videos like Isaac using CapCut. Here's the final result. I've been running a faceless YouTube channel for over two years, getting millions of views until I realized that I've been doing it all wrong. There's a way to achieve these results in just a few months. Let me explain. If you need tips for running a faceless YouTube channel, and want to learn CapCut video editing, then you're in the right place. But before we continue, I want you to go ahead and download all the assets used in the video. The links are in the description. It took me over four hours to create these images. I found the Isaac images by searching on Google and then edited them in Adobe Photoshop to resemble Isaac's style. Oh, how I wish I had a suit. It would have saved me so much time if I could do my own photo shoot. Just me, my suit, and a quick and easy photo shoot. Certainly. To begin, I opened CapCut and imported all my assets. For the voiceover, I created it with Eleven Labs. The voice Isaac uses is an AI voice, which is awesome. Let's remove this little space because we don't want to waste any frames. So I tried to find something very similar to that. It was difficult to match the exact voice, but I found one that sounds good for the purpose of this CapCut editing tutorial. To make our work easier, I've added the opening shot of Isaac's video to our timeline. Let's analyze what he's doing. I've been running a faceless YouTube channel for over two years, getting millions of views. He's screen recording and simply zooming in and out of it. Now, let's import our first video recording into the timeline, which is, I've been running a faceless YouTube channel for over two years. Isaac starts by zooming in and out, which is why we see the white background on the player. To achieve this effect, we need to set a keyframe at the start of the video and then increase the scale to 135%. After that, we need to zoom in a little, let's say about five frames forward, set a keyframe and scale it down to about 93%. This works well in this case. Now you can start to see the background. As you may notice, our background is black, but Isaac uses a white background. We could import a white background from the local library, but CapCut offers multiple stunning backgrounds to choose from. Here's how to do it. Scroll down to the Properties panel, click on the Canvas option, and explore all the available styles. We want a simple white background, so I'll choose this one. Now, we have an interesting white background. Let's preview it to see how it looks. It's not exactly what we want, but we're getting there slowly. If you preview this, you'll notice that the next scene takes the position and scale of the first scene, and then slowly zooms out to fill the screen. To achieve this, import the second scene, add keyframes at the first position of the video, and make sure the scale is set at 93%, which is the exact scale used in the first scene. This will only work if we set the scale to that exact value, so make sure to use the corresponding value for your case. After adding the first keyframe, move forward about five keyframes. You can do this easily by hitting the right arrow key on the keyboard. Then, add a keyframe by clicking here and set your scale back to 100%. That's it. Now, let's import the third video, which is getting millions of views. As you can see, in this short clip, we need to apply scale and position because while zooming out, the clip moves a bit to the right side of the screen. To achieve this effect, click the keyframe button scale up the video to about 155%. We're doing this because we want the entire screen covered when we pull the movie to the right. Since we are animating with respect to the voice, we need to illustrate the part where he talks about millions of views. So, try to place the video in a position where the channel views will be visible. Let's play this and see if it's exactly what we want to achieve. As you can see, we are doing the same thing over and over, so I'll move a little bit quicker. Import the next scene and add a keyframe at the first position to start the zoom in effect and add the scale keyframe. Then move about five keyframes forward and add another keyframe. In the next scene, add a keyframe at the first position, scale it to about 94% and then move it forward to the end and add keyframes to it. Here at the rotation keyframe, we want the video to slightly rotate while increasing the size so it carefully fits the screen. Make sure to scroll down and change the canvas color to white. As we preview it, you can see how it looks. Though it doesn't look as smooth, we have to add curves to all the keyframes we assign to the videos. So don't worry, I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to cut this portion of the video to increase its speed so that it matches our voice. The last scene is the black background. For this, go to media, local library, and import this black background. Scale it down just to match our voice. 
Next, I'll show you how to make our animation smooth by adding curves. As you can see, it looks really linear. So, to make it smooth, let's add some curves. For the first scene, select it and right-click. Go down to Show Keyframes Animation. Basically, we want to add curves only to the keyframes we changed. In this case, we changed the scale property. First, let me expand the timeline so we can see what we are doing. Now I'll go to the scale property, double-click it to expand its view, go to the right, and click on this tiny button here to show all the keyframe graphs. Now, click on all these points and then select the curve button. This will make our animation smooth. I know it's time consuming, but in order to achieve a smooth animation, you have to do this to all the keyframes we assign. In other apps, you have a little more control, unlike in CapCut. This is just how you have to go about it. Also, try to keep it as simple as possible so you don't mess it up. We have to apply curves to all the other scenes as well. I'll simply speed this up since we don't want to waste time doing the same thing over and over. Just make sure that while applying curves to your keyframes, you preview your animation to ensure you are satisfied with the output. The next step is where we add our Isaac image to the timeline. Move it to the right side and adjust the scale. When you are animating, there are no limitations. Be creative with your ideas. But here, since we are trying to replicate another animation, we want it to look exactly as it is in our sample. Now let's add a keyframe at this position. Drag the timeline back to the starting frame and then move the image out of the scene. This will make it look like this. That's not all. Move the timeline again to the right and adjust the position of the image as well. Now, we have to exit the image out of the scene. I will simply select and copy the first keyframe by clicking on Ctrl plus C to copy, and then paste it right here with Ctrl plus V. As Isaac always does, he makes the image bubbly. We can achieve this by assigning multiple keyframes, but it doesn't always look great and is awkward. Fortunately, we have an effect to use. To add this cap cut effect, move over to Effects and search for Rebound Swing. You can also play with the strength value to make it more natural. We also need to play with the keyframes graph to make the animation smooth. Right click and select Show Keyframes Animation. Make sure you add curves only to the X properties. You don't want to mess it up. Okay, now I'm going to skip the next Isaac because it's the same thing. Instead, I'll move forward to this one because here there is a cool trick. As the image fades into the other one, it's a very easy technique to achieve. Just watch. Insert the image into the timeline, scale it to match the sound, and then move the timeline around this position. Add your keyframe, move the timeline back to the starting position, and pull the image out of the scene. Now you have a cool slide-in animation. So this is what we want to achieve. From the sample, you can see it comes in and rotates. Let's do that. First, copy this last point, then move forward about five frames and paste it. This will lock the position so it stays at the same spot for five frames. Now, move it forward and add your rotation to minus nine. Let's preview. It looks okay, but I think minus 12 will work just fine. Change it to minus 12. As you can clearly see from this animation, this image fades to the other. If we use the opacity, we will achieve the same result. Since the image moves to the middle before it fades, we have to move the image to the center and add another keyframe on this image. At this point, bring in the image that we want to morph into and place it in the starting position as that of the first image. Also, make sure it has the same size. So we will place it here, rotate it to minus 12, and then add a keyframe. Then move down and click here on this blend icon so we can see our opacity property. The value of the opacity keyframe has to be 0% at the start of the animation. Now assign the keyframe to the image exactly as we did to the first image right here. So move the timeline back to this position, which is the first position, and set your opacity to zero. Then move to the starting position back and set your opacity to 100%. I'll simply cut this image and bring it back to this position so I can add the transitions if necessary. And that is it for the rest of the animation. We simply apply the previous animation styles so I'll allow you to try them out yourself. For the captions, I added text and animations to them while scaling them to match the voiceover. But if you're using CapCut Pro offline, you can auto-generate your captions. Meanwhile, for the ending particles, I simply went over to Effects and Imported Particles. I duplicated it, rotated it, and changed its position so as to populate my screen. And there you have it. 
we have come to the end of this CapCut tutorial. If you want me to show you how I created all the images used in this CapCut editing tutorial, let me know in the comments section. Please, I need your support. You can support me by liking and sharing this with others. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss the next tutorial. See you, thank you, and please subscribe.